Welcome to the Nerdiverse. Go ahead, sit and listen to the masters, the old heads, talk about what you love the most. Video games, comics, movies, and everything you need to maintain your We got the knowledge that's straight out the ether. Gonna need a drink and have to take a seat to expand your mind and listen to the speaker. Mike and the squad's gonna give you what you need. Please uh, send in a question. Come and get some answers. Learn a couple less from the masters with the special guests. We got the green lanterns glowing on our chest. Yes, please sit back and relax. Cause we're gonna hit you with them stole cold facts and allow me to be the very first to welcome you to the masters of the nerdiverse welcome to masters of the nerdiverse where we always have such sites to show you you can always find this podcast on itunes stitcher spreaker soundcloud youtube and of course the sunken city of rapture where a man is entitled to the sweat of his own brow. I am, of course, your host, Mike G. And with me, as always, is my sarcastic co-host. Winter Sturt Event! He's Wait the... for Half-Life 3! <laughs> <laughs> you're jumping the gun there, buddy. You're, Sorry. you're jumping the gun there, buddy. Uh, he's not that sarcastic, but he's very excited about Half-Life 3, which is coming out next week. Uh, it's not. Don't listen to my <laughs> Wait a minute, I'm like, should I actually click on that article? You would just cut <laughs> off the podcast now and go buy it. <laughs> yeah. Me and you both. We're like, what the hell? I'll just... Take my money, just Gabe! <laughs> Gabe, we've had it up to here with your bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> just bring out the I've damn been watching, game. Like, so I've been watching the back catalog of Funhouse, where they have, like, the wheelhouse game, where it will be like a you, anyone can do this. Just look up thewheelhouse.com, and it will like spin a wheel, and it will find a random Steam game for you, mm-hmm. and, you and you can pay for it and play for it and play it. And almost all the games are garbage, and I'm convinced now that Steam is like the wild, wild west of video games. Man, you're not telling a lie, Steam. Man, there's a new game out that everyone's playing called Super Seducer. Have you heard this one? Ooh, no. It's super dumb. Wait, is that kind of like uh, you, you're like a cop that comes home chasing the wife and her lover around? Kind of like a, a 30 days dead by daylight sort no, of scenario? No, man. Oh. It's like, remember those <laughs> old, those old um, uh, Panasonic uh, like video movies, video movie video games, where it's just live action, but you choose... Almost like, uh, oh, dang, I can't remember. But pretty much, it's a game based for creepers on how to get your creep game skill up. And it's like the most disgusting game I've ever seen, where it's like, it puts you in a scenario, and you, it's live action. And like, you're walking down the street, and you see a girl walking, coming towards you. What is, what, where do you stand to engage her in conversation? Do you, do you, oh, I've do you, seen that. Do yeah. you walk behind, do you walk on the side of her? Do you stop dead center where you are, or do you walk directly in front of her? The answer is you walk directly in front of her, because that gives her less options to circle around you and try to ignore you. It's like stuff like that. I'm like, oh my god, it's <laughs> disgusting. <laughs> oh, but but Steam is the home for things like that, and you can put out any crappy, unfinished, uh, clickbait garbage game on Steam, and they'll take it. There's no just. Like you said, it's like the wild, wild west. Mm -hmm. And it's the worst, but the best. Because if you want a crappy video game, just go on to Steam. You'll find more than you want. It's the lament configuration of video games. Yes. uh, You'll hear me reference Funhouse a lot more. I really like them. To the point where I saw, like, oh, they have an opening for a video editor? I have no clue how to do it, but I'm going to look into it. And I'm like, see you, lo- see you later, Masters of the Nerdiverse. And I oh, become, shit. See you later. and then I, I block off the sensual quadrant of the Nerdiverse. You're this is our funhouse. This is de- you're a dead to me, Winter. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, what it's the a hell? cutthroat world. <laughs> I will not stand here and allow you to sully the great name of the Nerdiverse in your respective quadrant. Can't. I'm gonna go I'm there. Not, I'm t- I, hey, the I'm like the Trump. I'm Trump of the Central Quadrant. You know I'm just what? telling it like it You're is. You're about to get impeached, bro. 
<laughs> you, yeah. You're in your Steam games and your Funhouse mirrors. You speaking of <laughs> speaking of Trump, did you watch that video of him talking about the Space Force? No, man. I don't. I don't watch anything Trump because it depresses my soul, bro. This would make your day, okay? <laughs> like Ugh. I was hesitant of posting it on my Facebook because I was waiting for people going, yeah, but you know, and then that's just they link and they yeah. start like battling in the comments. I'm like, no, this is funny. I don't he's want He's talking kind of about. Heat, he's talking about like with the with the new technology and the wave of the future. It could very well be that we need a space force. We have the air force. We have the navy. We have the army, but we need a space force. And my mind just goes, nar, 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 power Winner. metal. Like, Winner. Yeah. I don't, I, I swear sometimes on the podcast, right? Maybe like yeah. in passing, but I don't like swearing a lot because I like this to be a PG show. PG 13, yeah. mind you. So I don't expect it to come up. Right? But when you, <laughs> when you tell me things like Trump wants a space force yeah. to put, to put guns in space. To defend nothing. Yeah. It makes me say, what the fuck, dude? <laughs> like, well, no, I don't want this. Inf- this is the worst, man. Like, this, what? Well, this is this is our quadrant. This is the nerdiverse that we're talking about here. So Trump has no place in the nerdiverse. That's first of all. Well, there's uh, a couple of reactions no, to this. Only, the <laughs> only Trump-like entity within yeah. the nerdiverse is Biff Tannen. And that's alternate future oh, Biff right. Tannen from Back to the Future 2. That's the only... We're- Trump-like creature within the yeah. entire Nerdiverse is alternate reality Biff Tannen, where he he's he's distorted the the time space continuum so much that he's created a hellscape. That's the only version of any kind of hint at Trump. Will you let me finish my story? You can do your <laughs> my diatribe later. <laughs> Whatever. So anyway, man. Space so anyways, force, okay. when he says that, he chuckles, and then he, like, looks in the back, and he's like, look, look at all those reporters, and I can just see the reporters going, did the president just say Space Force? <laughs> and then you just hear, scribble, 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 or, like, that's when they cut to the the newsmen, like, running to the phone booth to get to the operator, operator, get me to the New York Times. I can't. And he goes, yeah, just a bunch of fake news. I'm like, but you just said Space Force. The, he said the words Space Force. Yeah. And then my mind it, automatically went to Moonraker, James Bond Moonraker. <laughs> you know what I think? I think of yeah. Zap Brannigan in freaking Futurama. That's what I think when I hear the words Trump's Space Force. I, I, uh, Not Trump. It's, it's going to be American. Mer- it's going to be American Space Marines. <laughs> and, and you know what? And this is what my this is what my friend said. She's like, she's like, well, they're the reason why he's wanting to do this is because they're he probably knows that there's something up there. No, man. Okay, <laughs> <I'm> okay. Like, <laughs> no. Yeah. So Trump is going to protect the American skies, right? But he's also, American space, not but he's also <laughs> gonna. That's what I'm saying. Like he's also gonna protect the American spaceways. So he's only gonna patrol America's border within space. So that little American shape is going to be well, like we a cookie cutter space. through space. That's the problem with your logic. There, we own all of space. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I I meant to assume that he only wanted to protect America's universe. Not no, he the is Earth's. protecting America's universe. The thing is, we own all of it. <laughs> Can we move Manifest on? destiny. <laughs> Everything the light touches, right? Yeah. Even black holes. How was your week, man? No, China could have this. Uh, Are yeah, you designing but... a uniform for the space police? I'm just like copy and pasting a form of like the Spartan armor with starship troopers <laughs> and going like, what you need is space chaplains. And a, that's when I come in. <laughs> a, a good bug is a dead bug. Yeah. <laughs> Man, that would simplify everything. That would simplify so much. <laughs> if, if like if we find out that there's bugs in space and they're kind of violent to us, then we <laughs> just a little go, bit. Just yes, a little bit. We have to be a lot violent against the bugs. That's we can we now mean. do semi-racist because we could say semi-racist stuff because they're bugs. <laughs> um, human we can... beings in their core are shitty people, so we need mm-hmm. a focus. That's not us, because so, we're cannibalizing our own race the human race right here the hot 
take from Mike G. I'm just saying, like, you give an external entity, like you said, the bugs, then they, they, mm-hmm. we, all those jerk racists can just be racist towards bugs. Yes, we've all we all know the ending of Watchmen, people. It's uh-huh. true. <laughs> it's, it, it actually happened. We just got neuralized and we were made to forget. <laughs> That's what happened. Um, yeah. You know they're making a TV show of Watchmen, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's going to have the okay. giant bug. It's going it's to have the giant squid monster in the end of the graphic novel. Yeah. Oh, geez. Or by her other name, Rosie O'Donnell. Whoa! Whoa. Thank you very much. Rosie I O'Donnell has enough problems, now. dude. She has yeah. enough problems, man. Yeah. They had enough victories. Yeah, I'm an insult comic from the 80s. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why, Winter, the insult comic, uh, the insult yeah. co- comic priest. Have you heard about this Tanya Harding? This Tanya Harding. <laughs> what is the deal? I don't know radios? why I'm doing the Def Jam version. I don't know, man. Yeah. You're killing me. Yeah. What else did you do with your week, man? <laughs> uh, <laughs> back you would think. Track. Yeah. Um,. <laughs> I, I did a lot of work around the house. I'm watching. I have like two episodes left of Sons of Anarchy, and I'll finish by rewatching of it. Um, I'm doing some brainstorming of what I want the Winter Brand to be. Uh, doing doing some other things about like I don't really. Uh, I did some things in the past, like uh, have like a portfolio website, which I don't necessarily think is. Like, I'm there yet to have a portfolio site. Yeah. So instead of paying for that, I might be doing, like, a side project of, like, weekly five-minute podcast of what people are looking for in Netflix. That's I don't know. Man. Yeah. Like, uh, because I've been – that's one of the uh, joys that I have of finding random things to watch yeah. on Netflix or Amazon Prime. But I just need to stay active. That's all you, yeah, n- never stop. That's the secret. Yeah. Man. Just never and hopefully, stop, like, uh, NPR, Wisecrack, or like something like it never picks you between. up, right? Yeah, like, we'll give you $30,000 to work on this. I'm like, you had me at 30. <laughs> you had me at dollars. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. I feel you, man. Yeah, always work on your self portfolio, bro. You yeah. put yourself out there, man. Yeah. And I won't defect from the Masters of the Nerdiverse unless they pay me some money. <laughs> no, man. Masters of the Nerdiverse, you're paid with the goodwill of the of the Nerdiverse, Doug. Uh-huh. And through, like, uh, and through uh, Fiddle Faddle. It's a lot of Fiddle Faddle to be gained, my good friend. They get stuck, stuck in my teeth. You should know better. <laughs> well, we'll figure out a nice equal... Equal or lesser value alternative for you. Rotisserie chicken. That's <laughs> not equal or lesser. <laughs> you have to be like it'd be like one leg of, of rotisserie chicken, oh, and it's man, kind it's of and, it, and it's nuke warm, dude. It has to be nuke warm. Mm. All right, what? How was your week? Jeez, <laughs> for sure, my week was weird. So I finally got around to watching Saban's Power Rangers, uh, the <laughs> recent like horrible remake that recently yeah. came out. The Bonds. Is ing- is a Japanese for garbage? <laughs> okay, so, continue. So, Saban is garbage, and that's Japanese English. The 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 guy himself is a, is a piece of work. I'm not going to go into him, but the yeah. movie wasn't half bad, right? It wasn't half bad, man. It just took itself too seriously. You know what I mean? It's that problem where. I mean, the first Power Rangers movie is dope because you're a little kid when you first saw it, or that's the only reason it's dope to me. And right. that movie super didn't take itself seriously. It was real goofy and dumb and Ivan News and all that. But this one had an approach like Chronicle. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> it took itself ultra serious. I'm like, come on, man. Like You have to poke fun at yourself a little bit when you're making a movie about the Power Rangers, right? Yes. Like, they should have gotten the director of a movie that I watched today, Triple X. Return of Xander King. I love that movie, dude. It's so stupid. Yeah. Okay, we got to talk about Triple uh, X for a second. Uh, why were they surfing on motorcycles? On, why on not? The water? It, you have to understand. This is Vin Diesel's like money maker. This <laughs> is Fast Magnum and Furious, Opus, man. Yeah, this is Fast and Furious, and this 
<laughs> well, yeah, Fast and Furious and Triple X. Those are his franchises. Why well, did Ice also, Cube show up, man? Because he was in the series. Like the, I get it. Yeah. It's like when that guy from Tokyo Drift showed up. For, okay. There's, yeah. there's one guy who I can't stand. He's part of uh, Xander Cage's crew. And his superpower is just getting the crowd hype. He doesn't know fighting. He's not a gun guy. He's not in demolitions. It's just a guy who, who just gets the party started. <laughs> You know there was a part about? that I was walking. I was showing this at a youth center, yeah. and I was walking around making sure I actually broke a door midway because I was so pumped up about Xander Cage. Uh, I hate that yeah. guy. You know what I'm talking about? I can't remember. Was, was he uh, the one with like the blonde uh, highlights? No, that was Tony Ja. Uh, this is uh, there was uh, there was Ruby Rose who was right. the sniper. Uh-huh. There was that. There was the uh, I think Irish or English dude who was the who's the car guy, the hound, the hound, right? And then there was the uh, Asian guy whose part whose power was Michael to get the party Bisping. started. <laughs> the, Michael Bisping, he was the Asian guy. Yeah, he was the guy who whose power was only to be a club DJ. That's his only skill he brought to the table. But he could infiltrate clubs and and become the DJ and get everybody distracted. You know, you must under, you must remember. It's the I, worst. I think that I I do remember a club scene, but I was like, it's so talk, dumb. I was at the other like, side of the room. There? I was even talking to my coworker who was like, kind of freaking out. Like, <laughs> I I don't like this movie at all. She I, said, I hate the movie so much, but I love it. I love that Donnie Yen is is super char- is like a caricature of himself. Yeah. In this movie. Well, it's, it's a prequel to Rogue One. So <laughs> <laughs> it's a prequel to Rogue One. Yeah, when he when he was like surfing on that motorcycle on the water, he was like, "I am one with the force, and the force is one with me." And uh-huh. that's how he got through it. But yeah, or it could, it's a it's a, we could get really into the weeds and consider it like a prequel in the war in the style of Cloud Atlas. <laughs> then everything's a prequel, right? Cloud, Cloud Atlas is, is. is all connected. A prequel to its own sequel, my dude. You're making my brain bleed. Uh, just not enough Power Rangers. Uh, nah, watch it. It's free now. I'm trying to power through Jessica Jones because that came out. Holy <sighs> vey, man. Yeah. I don't know. I'm a th- woman. <laughs> that's, that's not. That's not the that's, plot, dude. That was last season's not, plot. Uh, okay. The pl- I'm a woman with power. <laughs> okay, that's the plot. Okay. You're okay. killing me. Oh man. <laughs> no, you need me to write this stuff. <laughs> I know, man. Uh, for some reason, it'll be set in feudal, in feudal uh, Japan. Yeah, but, memoirs of a geisha, Jessica. <laughs> geez. It'll be like a Tom McFarlane action figure. It'll be like samurai action, Jessica. Uh huh. This season lacks a central villain. That's interesting. Like, uh, Tenet killed it as a uh, Kilgrave last season, and he was really the focal point of the story. But as far as I've seen it, up to like episode seven or eight. Mm-hmm. This this story really lacks a really good villain, and it just makes it puts all the focus on Jessica, and yeah. that character is just not that compelling to me by herself. She's kind of standing on a ledge this season, and it's not a lot of action. It's a lot of weird cut scenes to hide the fact that there's no action. She doesn't mm-hmm. do fight scenes. It's just it's a hard watch. But you know. let me ask you this, Marvel sympathizer. <laughs> <laughs> If there was not that many, if there was wasn't a saturation, in my opinion, oversaturation of superhero stuff, would you think this season? Would you take the season differently than what you're reviewing it as right now? Here's the thing, and I and that's a very good question. Is that I know it is. <laughs> you are a master of the nerdiverse, after all. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Given the saturation, or as you would say, oversaturation of the superhero drama in the last, let's say, 10 years, because that's how long this Marvel experiment's been going. Yes, I would say this would be better than anything that, if nothing came out and it was just this, then it would be amazing, right? Right. It would, it would be uh, a tour de force, whatever. But you have to stand this up with what we've recently gotten. You can't just put it in an isolated box and let, and judge it on its own merit versus this other everything that's come out before it, like... In fact, Punisher. Marvel doesn't want you to do that because of how many crossovers it does. Well, but. it's not It's not even that. It's just 
that Marvel wants you to understand this corner of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Uh But the problem with these Netflix films, or TV shows for that matter, is that they don't really acknowledge the films, right? They acknowledge them, but only Mm -hmm. on a very simplified matter. So Jessica Jones doesn't really bring up Captain America or Thor or any of the main film heroes or villains for that matter. It's all real isolated into its own thing. But Mm. they tell you that it exists. They externally tell you that this is in the same New York that the incident happened. And you're supposed to believe it because that's what they've told you. But there's Mm -hmm. no evidence in the content that will actually give you any signs that these characters are breathing and living within the same ecosystem. You know what I mean? It's it's the same problem with uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. where Marvel kind of made a left turn. Where they were, yeah. yeah, they were like, we call that jumping the shark, I believe. <laughs> no, it's not. I wouldn't say, I'm, and I'm not trying to be a Marvel uh, uh, sympathizer here, but I'm just saying, like, as a thematic place that Marvel changed their mind somewhere down the road within these last 10 years, and the TV shows have gotten kind of the shaft. Mm-hmm. And uh, they don't get the same, they, they aren't allowed to live and breathe in the same space as Spider Man Homecoming. Or uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, for that matter. You know what I mean? So, and with Marvel slash DC planning to start the Disney Channel, I think even less focus is going to be given on these Netflix shows like Daredevil, uh, Luke Cage, Iron Fist, and Jessica Jones. They're just going to be kind of played on the back burner for the future endeavors. Do you think it's part of the contract that those shows are then going to go continue on the Disney Channel? I don't know. That's a really good. That's a really good idea. Question. Mm-hmm. It's like, are these going to exist outside of uh, the Disney Channel? Like whatever Marvel's got planned after Avengers Four. Mm-hmm. I think all of these things are coming to a close. That's my personal uh, straw hat or tinfoil hat idea. Yeah. Is that this is the last season you're going to get of Jessica Jones? You know, this next season yeah. Daredevil is going to be the last season you get of Daredevil. And they're going to be retired to the golden age of Marvel, which is the first 10 years. And then when they get to the Disney Channel, their streaming service, you're going to have a whole new slew of new heroes to, to mm-hmm. dig. And these characters are going to be uh, backburned to guest characters, right? Like, let's say yeah. uh, Moon Knight comes out on the Disney Channel. You may see Jessica Jones do a cameo or Daredevil, right? But they're not going to be their own full-blown thing. That's what I think. Yes. Keep a watchful eyes, fellow masters of the nerdiverse. Yeah. Of the, this, is, this is dangerous waters. It's un... I, yeah, man. I saw the signs when Marvel uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. came out. Me too, and I was man. like, I'm, I'm out. Ooh. I'm out. I'm not going to watch anymore. But I, then they yeah. draw... But I still have Punisher in my waiting list. Because cause there's, like, there's like a certain three horsemen... Of the apoc of the comic apocalypse that I need to see <laughs> uh, in a in a show. There's uh there's the Punisher. Yeah. There is they need to do Spawn. Wait, is Spawn Mar- Spawn's, Spawn's Marvel, Marvel, right? He's he's um he's image, but yeah. Yeah, well add him to the Marvel universe. Uh, like <laughs> they need to, it just in the comic world to say com comic game because there's going to be a day where there's gonna movie that's gonna come out and then they go that's a piece of crap. <laughs> and then the universe. Yeah. And then next thing you know, it's the domino theory of uh, of uh, movies. Yeah. And then and then I'll come and I'll be the old man with his tinfoil cap going. See, I told you. Oh, by the way, third person is Blade. Blade is coming. <laughs> Blade is show. definitely coming, dude. And here, and I t- definitely agree with what you're talking about. Where there is going to be a time where fads die. Right? It happened to the western. It happened to science fiction, but they don't die. They just get, they just Not take a, they take a back burner. Right? When fads die, when fads die. I mean, the prince. when s- superhero movies aren't going anywhere, but when mm-hmm. they continue to make this kind of crazy Black Panther billions money forever, no, that's, that's, that's not a smart way to approach that idea, but they're going to take a back burner to whatever the new hotness is in the next five or 10 years. It's just how it's going to go. But they're still going to make their money, but it's just not going to be as rapid as it is now. Is this is Avengers for the end of that era? It depends on how Marvel approaches it. You know what I mean? Like, are they going to start doing these at a slower pace? Or are they going to ramp up? 
until they totally burn out the market, which they've done before, right? I mean, Disney has done that before with like Pirates of the Caribbean, where they've buried the hatchet so deep that no one cares anymore. It is no longer lucrative. So they're going to keep pushing out this stuff at high volume until it doesn't make money. And then they'll reinvent themselves with something else. But in the meantime, I'm going to enjoy my weird Jessica Jones in my mm-hmm. in my dope Avengers Infinity War and my uh, pop vinyl of Suri from Black Panther until the fad's dead. This is a golden age to be a comic book nerd right now. And I'm going to enjoy Battlestar Galactica. <laughs> That's We're okay. That, Battlestar Galactica always finds a way to come back. So I'm sure that'll be on sci-fi channels. There's probably Mm -hmm. some kind of uh, remake in the works. Other than that, man, I just played Fortnite. (laughs) I just played some Fortnite. You're becoming a true nerd, laddie. And I don't feel, I don't know how to feel about the game, dude. I don't, I don't, uh, it's weird. It's like, Mm -hmm. I didn't play any PUBG, but I get the, I get it. But I, I booted up the game and I played maybe like five matches and I got it was like okay that's it all right I'm I'm good I'm back going back to Monster Hunter, I didn't get the appeal, you know, I don't know maybe I need more time in it. I don't know. Yeah, well, there is a flaw. We can get into battle royale games real quick. How much time do we have? Yeah. Uh, we're about halfway through. Right? Okay, so <laughs> go for it, man. Should be enough time. So there is a flaw with uh, Battle Royale games, which is the amount of time, and this is in my mind, the amount of time it takes you to first get into a game and then, uh, this is the first flaw, get into a game and then uh, leaving the game sort of thing. You know what I mean? Like Call of Duty, I can play about five games in 30 minutes sort of thing. Yeah. um, Fortnite, I, I mean, of course, they're different genres, but they're still video games looking for entertainment. Uh, it is there's very little game, uh, like uh, I, I feel like at? there's very little reward. To yeah, that's what play, I'm looking for. Right? Yeah, very little reward, and this this goes back to a footage that I've seen back in the day when the game Evolve came out. Where oh yeah, I remember that. There was a guy playing the game on a uh, his, uh, and he was on the phone on his phone while he was playing the game, and wow. this was this was the start of a trend, uh, focus on League of Legends now, where you play the game, but you're really not actively involved in it. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so then now you get yeah. to Fortnite where there is a very viable gameplay strategy of sitting and waiting. Yeah. <laughs> and that camping and that's, is a real thing yeah. in that game, dude. Like Yeah. You find and, your little cut, wait maybe like 15 20 minutes, you're top 50, you didn't do anything, right? Right. And it blows my mind that people are going, I'm going to spend so much money on a game that I'm just going to sit there and wait and then wait for pitter patter of feet and then get blown up. And that's the problem with kind of competitive gaming is that you need to be constantly involved in the competition. Right. right. And certain games allow you to do that. Like I know playing sports games is like being on defense is the mental break for me because everybody wants to be on offense. Right. Everybody yeah. wants to do offense. But when it comes to defense, you're like, all right, I'm going to pick my basic defense plays. And don't give it a lot of thought. Where, like you said, like guys will go on to PUBG or to Fortnite and camp. I did my first game. I made top twenty and I camped. I got me a nice gun. I got me a nice uh, revolver. I found me a little hut in the middle of the woods. I made sure I was within the little collapsing circle. I made top twenty. I was like, this is stupid. And I was like, all right, I'm gonna be more aggressive. I'm a running gun it. So I went out there like right. Rambo and got my ass shot off by a sniper. Yeah, it's a game that's crazy. Does not. The, that punishes those who are like used to Call of Duty or like want a running gun, and unfortunately, I don't. I I see battle royale as like a fad. <laughs> it's a, gonna go. It's a big. It, I hate the. I don't because I know there's fans out there and I get it. I know, but it's a big fad, dude. It's it's mm-hmm. a big money making fad. You know, what and I'm what's gonna happen is that the because I've listened to the creator of PUBG talk. And he's got some 
some cojones, we will say, mm. about like people ripping off his type of gameplay. His his game because he's he he says that he's created the battle royale system. Wow. Okay. And that there's people ripping him off Fortnite, and this is like. And he's talked about like legal re- representation. Like, like calm like, down, bro. You know. Yeah, like, like Jeez. you do not see Call of Duty or like you don't see Medal of Honor <laughs> going around like suing Call of Duty, do you? No, man. Here's the thing, and it happens with gaming all the time. Is that yeah. somebody comes? Someone's actually creative, right? Like yeah. dark, like Demon Souls and Dark Souls, and the guys from From Software. They low key created a genre, right? How many yeah. different Souls games are there floating around? Floating around now. He create okay. I'll give him props. He be- he created the first popular battle royale game. I'll give him that. Popular, yeah. mind you. He not- he didn't reinvent the wheel, right? <laughs> so he needs to calm down and look t- look in his own yard before trying to look over the fence into anybody else's yard. How yeah. about you make PUBG better than worried about what Fortnite's doing? And the reason Fortnite is beating PUBG in Twitch right now, because Fortnite is actually a complete game for what it is. Right, and it's fun to watch. And too. it's fun to watch. Point. Where PUBG is a graphic, it's almost like a graphical mess, and it's not a complete game. The game isn't even fully complete yet. It's still yep. in beta, right? So I'm like, complete your game before you want to go ahead and talk about someone who quote unquote stole your idea. Yes, and he's helped other people make similar games. For so, instance, tell me like, relax. Like H one Z one, I think he helped create King of the Hill. Vert. Right. Anyways, yeah. So that's enough about him. I'm done with chicken dinner, dude. Man, <laughs> right now. Oh uh, man. Speaking of creators that need to finish what they've started, let's get into the news. <laughs> oh, this is a news podcast. <laughs> it wasn't just airing grievances. Man, <laughs> yeah, grievances are long and hard, dude. They'll get you. Oh, uh, man. Speaking of creators who need to get their act together and finish what they've started, uh, Dave Newell from Valve said that they're going to start shipping new games again. Yay. Ooh. For those who don't know, I'm going to give you a quick synopsis of the story that is Valve. So Valve is a very, very kind of off and on gaming production company along the lines of like Rockstar. I compare them to Rockstar a lot because they don't put out a lot of content, but when they do, it blows up the internet. It blows up the world, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, Half-Life is a big one. Uh, Portal is a big one, right? Uh, Left for Dead. Is Left for Dead one of theirs? Yeah, Left for I believe it is. Right, Left for yeah. Dead, man. So what happened was is these guys got the bright idea to make their own gaming market market marketplace, right? Which is called Steam. The problem with that is, is that Steam made a insane amount of money very quickly. It became very popular for PC gamers worldwide to the point where no matter what game they made, it would be a a it would be in the red versus what they're bringing in for Steam. So like any greedy businessman, they say, let's stop making games and just focus on this. So a lot of sequels to fan the games that fans are dying to play, Left 4 Dead 3, Portal 3, Half-Life 3 for that matter, were put on the back right. burner forever. We're talking, what, 10 years since Half-Life 3 was supposed to come Very out? Very much. Like I was in high school when... Uh... I think Orange Box actually came out. If they announced yeah. Left 4 Dead 3 at E3, I would lose my mind. I love the Left 4 Dead series. I it's one of the it's one of the first co-op games that I actually wanted to play. I uh, thought you I would I think what would like tear down like you're looking at people attacking each other would be if finally they did a the Half-Life 3. Dude, of, that like, is the forever game, dude. It's like or Beyond even if Good they and just Evil 2. It. I think it would be more if, if they just teased it, not like a full on trailer, but like they have like a, a a trailer for Artifact, which is their card game. Yeah. Their their Hearthstone competitor. And then you just have like the main character from Half Life just like go, Hi, how's it going? And then he ex- ex- <laughs> just super un- unceremoniously. Yeah. I'm thinking like a Sony press conference. The show was great. Oh, we have one more thing. They just show you a logo. In a three, people would explode. 
the internet would explode. Because cats, yeah. there's a guy in the middle of the woods with a knife waiting for this game to come out. For for ten years, it's mm-hmm. like the moment it comes, the moment it's announced, he's gonna cut a half life symbol into his arm. Cats are super waiting for them to do stuff, and it's been such a uh, a disservice to the fans who are just like giving up on it, man. I don't, there's guys like I don't care anymore. I can't wait for Half Life Forever because it's gonna make me salty towards all the other games that are coming out. And lately, we've been getting a lot of sequels. Like Metroid Prime Three was announced. I'm like, what? You know, like, um, yeah. Final Fantasy VII Remake was announced. What? Right? Shenmue Warhammer Vermintide. <laughs> oh, oh, I want to play that game. I want to talk about that next. It's only on PC, right? Warhammer Vermintide? It's only on, like, No, PC. Xbox. I don't well. have an Xbox. Bruh. I got to get on it. I want to play yeah. that because it reminds me of Left 4 Dead. But, yeah, Valve is back in the video game making business, and that's only good news. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Speaking of more news, there was a Nintendo Direct this week, and what that is is pretty much Nintendo's E3, where they a baby E3 kind of, where they talk about games that are coming out and what they have planned for the future. Uh, there's a lot of things that they show. They show uh, the new Normal Hero spinoff, um, Travis Touchdown Strikes Again, which looked interesting. There's a Dark Souls mm-hmm. port with a. Uh, a new amiibo for Dark Souls. It's the Praising the Sun guy, Solaire. I think that's how you pronounce his name. Let's... Yeah, because that's what everyone's <laughs> like. Dude, I get it. Don't anger okay. the Souls fans, man. They're they're already sold I'm out. Not... They're already sold out. <laughs> oh, like... well, that that puts me in my place then. <laughs> Nintendo just for nostalgia people. <laughs> no, man. Dark Souls has a huge following, man. They can't. Those guys are just printing money. Uh, but the big thing. That was announced at uh, the Nintendo conference for me was that they're making a new Smash game for the Switch, which mm-hmm. is Nintendo's fighting game, as it were. And now you guys know how much of a big fighting game mark I am. Uh, but for those who played a lot of Smash, the question is, is it just going to be a port to the Switch or is it going to be a, a full fledged brand new game? And we kind of don't know at this point. But it would be smart just to make it a port, but it would be cool for it to be an actual full-fledged brand new game with new sprites and uh, new characters and things like that. So right. we'll, we'll have to see because I am i haven't bought a Nintendo since the GameCube because I had no desire in anything Wii. But I do want to Switch, so this is just another reason for me to buy a Switch sometime down the road. Man, just get an Xbox. <laughs> I will get an Xbox when they make a game I want. Of our, this is a declaration. They make yeah. an exclusive game that's good that I that I can play only on Xbox. I'll buy an Xbox. It's as simple as that. Xbox One, their entire game life had no decent uh, exclusives in my period in in, in their period. Come at me. Well, I'm pretty sure I've sworn already that I'm not going to buy a console next generation. I'm going to the PC Master Race. But uh... I wish I could follow you, man. But I'm broke, bro. Yeah, I'm broke too, but we'll see what happens. Man, that's an easy two G's, easy two G's. Two G's? Easy two G's. If you want a decent, if you want a decent beast, yeah. easy, easy two G's, flat. Well, oh, maybe man. I'll stick with something. Okay, <laughs> I'm just being real. Like for what I, I want that thing to be able to run life, man. Yeah. Uh, run life. You know what I mean? That's just I want that thing to do is just run reality. Yeah. Speaking of distorted realities, uh, Rob Liefeld sold his Extreme Universe to Netflix <laughs> for co- for some comic book news. Do you know who Rob Liefeld is? I'm just curious. No, he sounds like a cool man. <laughs> he is not. Uh, Rob Liefeld is one of the guys. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to give you a quick history lesson on Rob Liefeld. He was part of the Magnificent Seven back in the 90s that uh, did a grand exodus from Marvel to, to create Image Comics. It was Rob Liefeld, it was Jim Lee, it was Todd McFarlane, Mark Silvestri, a bunch of guys, right? The problem, Uh and they all had a very similar art style. Like, they all drew that extreme, a thousand patches, overly buff, overly sexualized characters of the 90s, which tanked 90s comics, honestly. Uh, (laughs) And each of them created their own offshoot, offshoot universe. Uh... 
uh, um, I think Mark Silvestri had had Top Cow. Uh, uh, Jim Lee had Wild Storm, and Rob Liefeld had the Extreme Universe, where it had all these C and D list characters, like who had really edgy names like uh, Bloodstorm in. I'm making up I like Bloodstorm. Bloodstorm is <laughs> like awesome. See, it's all super edgy. And they're all there's a famous picture of Captain America that Rob Liefeld drew where his chest is like fifty feet out from his shoulders. It's super dumb if you know what I'm talking about. So apparently he sold all of his co- his comic book creations to Netflix so they can start their own Rob Liefeld Extreme Universe. All which, right. Which I cannot wait to see what this thing looks like. <laughs> I'm so excited. Because, you know, they're losing Marvel, right? They're losing all of Disney. Right. So they need something to fall back on. Rob Liefeld is not the answer, man. <laughs> oh, man, I can't wait. Just give it a chance. <laughs> I, I will definitely give it a chance. You guys could be hearing me on here going nuts when when they do the first of the Liefeld Extreme Cinematic Universe and they put that crap out. Oh, man. That's all I wanted to say on that. I got some news for you, Winner. (laughs) Yeah. Call of Duty 4 Black Ops. I mean, Call of Duty Black Ops 4 is being uh, confirmed. I saw that. Yeah, boy. Come on, bros. Get get your monster energy drink. Time to... It's time to blow up. It's time to... Time, time to get that, like, Batman and Robin... Ro- Batman, Batman and Robin. And Robin. <laughs> yes. The uh, Batman and Robin forever, the Bane thing. that You know that bu- the one where uh, Uma Thurman, uh, Bane, you just press the button and the yeah. juices come to his mouth? That's what you need for monster energy no, drink. It, and I also want a Mountain Dew Cold Red version of that where you just push it and the Cold yeah. Red goes right into your veins, bro. Mm-hmm. Black Ops 4. I know, wasn't there one based in Vietnam or something like that? That's the best one. The first one, in my opinion. Okay, what era of war do you want Black Ops 4 to be based on? Oh, Vietnam. We need more Vietnam games, people. That would be, honestly, you're right. I mean, like... You have uh, the soundtrack already. Like, you just have, like, Fortunate Son and, like, uh, <laughs> and White Machine Rabbit. Gun and White yeah. Rabbit. Yeah. That would Machine be dope, gun. dude. Machine yeah. Gun. But that makes sense, honestly, because World War One and Two have been done to death, uh-huh. and the uh, only other like great American wars, like outside of like the Civil War and the Revolutionary uh-huh. War, is Vietnam. And now I wouldn't be down. I wouldn't be afraid of a Civil War game. That would be interesting. The Black you would have Ops to, of Civil War. Well, you would have to reinvent how guns would operate in a FPS. If you're gonna do a civil war game, <laughs> muskets and shit. Yeah. yeah, you would have to make it to where you shoot the gun once and then it drops. So now you have to find another gun. It'll be like, like it'll be like Reaper from Overwatch. Yeah, <laughs> just like have two muskets, arms akimbo, and just shoot both and drop them and grab another two. Yes. Now I've heard. Now I have no clue what the universe is gonna be for Black Ops Four because they've been in. The, they're now in the future. <laughs> Uh, I wish they leave the future, man. That's so yes. like, ugh, garbage. Yes. Whenever you should run to the hills when the game goes to the future, unless it, it's a Spartan warrior. Uh, Straight up. You know what? I yeah. totally agree with you on that. If it's yeah. not freaking Master Chief, then I, see if they came out with an impressive looking like Halo Seven, I would buy yeah. a one for that. I love the Halo series, but. They, yeah, they but you're a traitor. You do not buy an Xbox. You do not buy it in a. I have no allegiance, <laughs> Don. When it comes to gaming systems, yeah. like I've always had both. Like I had a PS2 and yeah. I had an Xbox, right? I had a PS3 and I had an Xbox yeah. 360. Before that, I had a, a GameCube and a PlayStation, right? I even had the Dreamcast. You make games that are good for that system, I will buy it. But if you don't, I will not. Easy as that tros. Uh. Yeah. By the way, there are rumors that Black Ops 4, I read this in a different article, that Black Ops 4 will have a battle royale. Of course it will. <laughs> I'm serious. It's Holy like, shit. I looked up Black Ops 4 and there was like three articles that were like 16 hours ago. This was uh, up. Man. And it was like, Battle Royale, Call of Duty 4. I'm so over it, dude. I'm hearing that Red Dead uh, Red um, Dead Redemption 2 is going to have a Battle Royale of some now, form. Now, that would, that would blow my mind. 
I like it like cowboys, a cowboy battle royale where you don't have automatic weapons. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's well, all like Smith and Wessons and like and like revolvers and stuff and like right. and rifles. That'd be dope, dude. On horseback, that'd be cool, dude. Well, I'm I'm hoping for that they have like a like they're gearing up towards a red a Red Dead like GTA Online. You know they're gonna have that, dude. The problem is oh, they need man, to work on good. the loading. The loading time. Uh, it's one thing. It's like for for long. Either you sacrifice graphics for loading, or you sacrifice loading for graphics, right? Yeah. If you're pumping out crazy 4K resolution graphics, then your loading time is going to be a bit weird. But the only problem with loading times for these kind of games, let's say the latest Grand Theft Auto and let's say Red Dead Redemption, is that once you're in the world, you're fine. Everything loads up quick. Everything's seamless. But it's going to take you a minute to jump in and jump out. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm cool with that. Man. Speaking of things that are going to be soon coming out, John Favreau has been tapped to write the live-action Star Wars TV series. I'm guessing for the Disney Channel, quote-unquote. Mm-hmm. Uh, Disney sure likes to keep it in the family, don't they? Well, it's like yeah. find someone that's not in the family. <laughs> Damn, you know what I mean? Real talk, dude. That, yes, and that's the pro. That's going to be a problem in the future, guys. Mark my words now. What's going to happen is that there's going to be your guys are going to get tired of Star Wars. I know yep. that sounds weird now, but and then you're going to go, well, doing what it other th- universes? Yeah, they're doing it to us, man. Like. They're making Star... Like, I have no desire to see Solo, right? It's just no desire. But and I also have no desire to see Episode Nine. And I'm like, I'm, I grew up with Star Wars, right? Like, like it's like yeah. it's such a weird feeling that they're doing too much. Like, and it's almost like... It's making me... And you mentioned, we talked about it earlier, but Marvel's really... They really need to slow down on putting these out. They have to make us miss it. You know what I'm saying? Like right. every year there's a Marvel movie and the only reason it stays fresh is because it's new characters, right? And the old characters overlap every once in a while, but Star Wars story is a Star Wars story. And anytime you change it, the fans freak out. So yep. every year it's going to be the same story over and over with different characters and different situations, because if you change it any kind of way, cough, cough, the last Jedi, <laughs> the fans freak out and get mad and want to revolt. So what do you do? You put out the same content until people are burnt out. And nine, if with the feedback that nine with eight got, and Favreau doing nine, and Ryan still being signed up to do the next trilogy. Yes. I mean, that's a movie a year where I could go for a Star Wars movie maybe once every three four years. Right. Well, you four see, or five I'm years. Fu- I'm fine. Well, it's like, uh, well, the Marvel thing's different because they're making more than one Marvel movie a year now. They yeah. also have like a TV show. Star Wars, it's like pretty set. Like in in the fall of every year, they're going to come out with a movie, right? And in the winter. Yeah. But that's just going to change soon if they're making TV shows. Yeah. So it's like, uh, it's, like you said, man, it's an oversaturation. It's too much of a good thing. Like, I can't have ice cream every day. You know what I mean? Like, not just on a health standpoint, but on a taste standpoint, right? Like, I want to miss the flavor of a a Marvel movie as much as I want to miss the flavor of a Star Wars film. And TV is just another encroachment on that fandom. It's too much, man. Like, I'm I'm starting to be more on your side about that every day. Make, <laughs> make us miss be, it. Make us miss be the it. Fel- be my fellow old Muppet. <laughs> old man Muppet. <laughs> Speaking of old Muppets. <laughs> Hold on. Before you go on. Yeah. Should we just pick two of these to go? And we, we're almost at an hour. All right. This, this will be the last one. This will be the last okay. one. Okay. Uh, well, I wanted Rob Zombie. Then we'll do Rob Zombie then. That'll okay. Be the last one. If something, yeah. So Rob Zombie confirms. That he's going to complete the Devil's Rejects trilogy. Yeah. A movie called Three from Hell, which I can only assume are the three main characters from House of a Thousand Corpses and the Devil's Rejects. And I, for one, am curious to see what this man's going to make. 
<laughs> yes. It's been a I, while I since have Halloween love, two. Right. I have a love hate relationship with well, it's like Halloween two wasn't his last film, if you might you might know. Oh you know right. what Oh my god, it was that he one did weird 13. one. The one that got an NC-17 rating. Yeah, I forgot about that one. That one was dumb, dude. I saw like yeah, I was half awake. You saw that? that. <laughs> uh, dude, I was ha- I left the TV on and it was on and I was like half sleep and I was like I saw a lady give birth to a goat that then turned into Beelzebub and I just turned back over and went to sleep, dude. I was like I'm over it. I don't know what this is supposed to be, but I liked The Devil's Rejects and in a weird funky guilty pleasure way i like the house the house of a thousand corpses you know what i mean like i will watch a house of a thousand corpses because it's interesting and the soundtrack is killer if you're a rob zombie fan yeah but we'll see Girl, a baby Daddy was uh, you're gonna, you're gonna listen to rob zombie later One, two, three. <laughs> i like to <laughs> i want to get fucked up and do fucked up shit <laughs> I did, I didn't know I didn't know that was part of the lyrics. I had the I had the um Yeah, the sense of radio Yeah. Oh no, man, you gotta go all in you're gonna make me listen to some Rob Zombie and play Monster Hunter yeah. later. But uh yeah, super looking forward to this one. Rob I'm Zombie one you want. Hell yeah. I'm the one that you need, yeah. Hell yeah. I love Rob. Don't get me like, started I, on Rob, bro. I like I only knew one of his songs, which was the one from The Matrix. <laughs> Dracula. Dracula is classic, and, dude. And then I went to Best Buy. I bought the CD, and then they went, "You're not old enough to buy it." No, yeah, you, you need a mustache. Went, okay, let me go back, and I got the censored version. And I'm like, okay, nah, you can buy it. You need a you need a full beard to buy Rob Zombie CDs in public. <laughs> you need you need a leather jacket with spikes on it to buy that and, shit. And like, I'm wondering what my parents were thinking when they hear in my room. Uh, uh, Never gonna stop me. Never gonna stop. Blah, 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 blah. I remember living dead girl. Oh yeah, I remember learning "Living Dead Girl" on the bass, oh, and yeah. I was just I, I could hear this music, but my mom heard the bass on my amp, and it was wow. like <laughs> my mom walked in, was like, "What the hell are you doing?" I was like, "I'm rocking out, mom." Get out of my room, mom! No, I'm learning new metal. Shut up, mom! I'm learning metal. <laughs> And she was like, all right, sounds clean. And she just walked back into her room. Sounds clean. <laughs> sounds clean. I love my mom, dude. All right, good good news. You ready for some questions? Yeah. Yes, man. If you want to ask a question to the nerds at the Nerdiverse, please send those to mastersofthenerdiversecast at gmail.com. I repeat, for those in the cheap seats, that is mastersofthenerdiversecast at gmail.com. You ready for a quick horror movie lightning round, Winter? Hit me. All right, we're going to do... Four quick questions, ladies and gentlemen. These are all horror movie related, and we're going to give our answers and a quick reason why. We're going to do one each in and, and row, so I'm gonna give, you're going to give your one, and I'm going to give my one. They're going to move on to two. You see what I'm saying? Okay. So number one, what is your favorite monster movie? You go first. <laughs> I will go first. My favorite monster movie, as I would say, creature feature is The Fly remake directed by David Cronenberg and starring national treasure himself, Jeff Goldblum. And the reason that is, is because it was very formative in my youth mm-hmm. and in, a, in the weirdest way possible. And it's actually a modern classic. It's like between this and The Thing, which directed by John Carpenter, but I consider that more a science fiction film than a monster movie, even though the monster in that is amazing. But if I had to choose like a straight up creature feature horror film, it's my favorite. It would be The Fly, directed by David Cronenberg. If you've never seen it, I envy you because watch it; it's amazing. It's 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 horrifically beautiful. Yeah, it's this this section is hard for me to find a uh, find a one that I like because a lot of monster movies. I, I I never grew up watching a lot of monster ones. I'm more interested in the other three categories. Okay. But if I had to choose, it would be an American Werewolf in London. That counts, my dude. That's a good uh-huh. one, bro. That is a super good one. Directed by yeah. uh by John Landis. John Landis. Landis. Yeah, yeah, man. Caddyshack. <laughs> Caddyshack. Blew yeah. your damn mind. It still to me has the best heart has the best werewolf transformation on on screen. 
Yeah, still to this I was day. actually watching clips of that last night. Insane, pretty- dude. Like, even with all the CG and industrial lights and magic and shit, yeah. nothing beats that, dude. You could feel it. Practical or effects. I, I think even what they did for, like, the... The uh, when the the attack scenes were pretty good, like the, you you don't spend more than like a second on when the wolf attacks, and it's right. clear like if you slow it down, you'll see that it's like a prop head that they're just shaking back and forth. But the but way it's, it's filmed, dude, it's like yeah. it feels like you're getting attacked. It's very quick. You're seeing like blurs of what's happening, and you're just hit. It's like a shark attack, right? You're just mm-hmm. hit, and then you're just destroyed or dead. And it's such it's such smart filming. Such a good movie, dude. All right, number two. What is your favorite haunted house movie? Hmm. Haunted House, uh that's a hard one. I do like uh wait, what's the one I'm trying to think of? It came out after The Exorcist. Maybe you can help me. No, <laughs> That's a good one too, by the way. <laughs> yeah, that is a good one. It's a movie that doesn't get a lot of hype. Oh. But it it's um it's kinda like a woman moves into a house and she notices like a corpse of a woman staring out the window. Oh, and... you're talking about the Sentinel. Yeah. Yeah, the one where she and... moves into like the apartment, but it's yeah. a gateway to hell. And has Walter yeah. Brugman or what Burgess Meredith. Yes. Uh, he, he's yeah. He's my man. That has Burgess uh, Meredith. That has Beverly De- D'Angelo. Uh-huh. And it also has Jeff Goldblum in it, funny enough. And Jerry Orbach. Don't forget Jerry Orbach. Don't forget Jerry Orbach. Dun, dun. <laughs> and Tom Berenger. But anyways. Uh, <laughs> that's yeah, a good it, one, dude. That's a great one. Like, I remember my mom always talking about it. But oh, Christopher Walken's in it. That's weird. Uh, right? Oh, man, it's such a good movie. So, like you said, it's a very, it's a hidden gem. Yeah. If, if you've never seen The Sentinel, go watch it, man. It's one of my favorite horror. It's one of my favorite horror films because it's and so it's subtle. It's not the 2006 movie, The Sentinel. No, we're not talking. <laughs> a lot of these aren't remakes, other than The Fly. So go see the original. Mm-hmm. Go see the original. Yes. Yeah. If I had to pick one, it would be a childhood favorite. It may not be the greatest <laughs> haunted house movie of all time, but mine is 1987's House, uh, starring Cat um, Williams. Oh. <laughs> oh, that would be so hilarious! It's the guy from um, from a, uh, All American Hero. Uh, believe it or not, I'm walking on air. Okay, that, yeah. that guy. Well, yes. it's a it's a movie about a guy who's a horror movie writer like Stephen King, and he and he finds out that his aunt passed away, and she he's inherited her house, quote unquote. And he finds out that, that the house actually killed her, is haunted, and he is next. And it's one of those films that is has a comedic flair to it. It's yeah. terrifying at times. It still stands up graphically because it's all practical effects. It's one of those movies that as a kid and as a horror geek, I would watch literally every day. It's like one of my favorite horror films yeah. of all time. I won't recommend it because you may not like it, but it's it's a sound film and I would definitely I stand up for it every day. Now, I would put this in like a hybrid category, monster and haunted house. Um, yeah, a little fil- a little movie that is about a cube that you enjoy. Hell, oh, <laughs> yeah. you know what's funny about Hellraiser? It's Hellraiser is a romance is is a is a romance movie. It's also a haunted house movie, and it's also mm-hmm. a monster movie. <laughs> It's it's hard to box it's uh, it's hard to quote unquote box that one right right because it's about uh, the infidelity of the wife to the uh, one of the characters' husbands or brothers rather it's also about the Cenobites and it's also about you know yeah pe- pleasure and pain what is also that? <laughs> it's your favorite song. Why do you a, why do you play Hellraiser every time you might mention Hellraiser? Because you don't want to mention think, at least once a podcast, dude. Well, it's a, I think that you, you should just have make like that a, your ringtone. Or something. Yeah. Well, right now it's the Seinfeld theme song, my ringtone. Anyways. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, man. Yeah, we can go. <laughs> Jeez. 
<laughs> oh, this is why you're the best, Winter. Favorite mm-hmm. slasher movie. What's your favorite slasher movie? Oh, uh, would you say that? I don't know. I don't know if I have one. I'm not that. I think a lot of them are too formulaic for mm. me. That's but funny. You, you go say ahead. That. Okay, I'll give you mine. Funny enough, you say formulaic because mine at the time was huh? very left of center to what the formulaic babysitter stuck in the house. There's a guy with a knife trope, right? Which yeah. is a lot of slashers. And mine's is the very first Nightmare on Elm Street. That's my favorite slasher oh, film. So that's considered a slasher. Yeah, I would consider it. It's, it's a cerebral slasher. The, the okay. character is using a bladed weapon. He's nigh unkillable. <laughs> And there's so teenagers, and there's teenagers in danger. Weapon. Okay. You know, and it's uh, like, and that's my absolute favorite slasher because I've thought about so many, like my, Halloween, Friday the 13th, Nightmare mm-hmm. on Elm Street, uh, Blood and Black Lace is one of my favorite old school slasher films. Black Christmas is another really good slasher film. Yeah. There's so many more that I could name, but I love the psychological trip that Wes Craven takes you on for Nightmare on Elm Street, where it's such a cerebral film, and it's trying to tell something a lot deeper than Baby Sirta gets killed by Maniac, right? It's it's such a layered movie. The first one, mind you, all the sequels were crap, in my opinion, outside of New Nightmare, but the very first movie scared the crap out of me as a kid, and growing up and seeing it over and over and over, there's new layers to it every time you watch it. It's my absolute favorite. Right. You know, there I don't have a particular like horror slasher thing, but I I a movie because I don't really have a favorite out there. I prefer like more like cerebral like cop chasing okay. so and killing someone. Yeah. For instance, this isn't the one I picked, but I think it's called Blood Pool with uh Clint Eastwood and Jeff Daniels and at the end it's like Jeff Daniels is the killer all along oh, and that okay. blew my mind away cuz I'm like <laughs> well, that's the guy from Dumb and Dumber he's a good guy how is he, do- how yeah. is he the killer how right but my favorite slasher because it's about one person killing everyone and I will not spoil it for you because the movie has an identity of its own very good I, I would consider that a psychological thriller and well that's what wikipedia says <laughs> yeah right right i just I called it but identity is a slasher film in a weird way but it's like nightmare on elm street it makes you think a little bit harder right yeah it makes you put things together it makes you play along with the story so i would definitely consider that a slasher film in its own weird way directed by the guy who also did logan Okay, moving on. Mm-hmm. I wish my last name was Mangoad. Lastly, what's your favorite vampire Yours movie? Woman Silver. Anyway. <laughs> oh, <laughs> estrogen gold. Or I would say Women Platinum. That's and I'm sig- sig- I'm signal- single. I'm my, signal. If my last okay. name was Girl Platinum, it would be the dopest. I would own that shit. Uh-huh. Uh, favorite vampire movie? Oh, uh, Bram Stoker's Dracula. Yeah. Francis Ford Coppola. Yeah, yes. Talk to me. Why is it your favorite? I know why, because it's a brilliant, beautiful film, but I'm curious to see where you come from. Well, it. first of all, it was the first rated R movie I ever watched. Oh, uh, nice. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. It's also, I love like the history part of the of it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I also I I also love like the background of the film the filmography all the. Special effects were done old school. Yes, they were. Matte paintings, yeah. all that fun stuff. Yeah, like, like it was so cool. Like dissecting in my mind, like how did they do the the weird movement of the girl of like uh, Anthony Hopkins with the cross mm-hmm. putting the vampire back into the her coffin? Yeah. And I'm like, wait a minute, that's just them recording something and then making it. It go in reverse, right? <laughs> that it's so like, simple, but it's so brilliant, right? <laughs> yeah, and it's like it works out perfectly too, dude. Like you're you're speaking to my heart because when I was a kid, I was definitely afraid of horror movies at first, yeah. and then my parents bought me the making of Thriller. Funny enough, <laughs> to kind of show me how it all works, and you got right. to see like Rick Baker 
to the makeup on Michael Jackson for the werewolf scene. And ever since then, I've been hooked on how are they doing that? How's that blood shooting out? How, what kind of makeup are they using? How are they filming that? And mm-hmm. trying to pick that apart in a movie is the, one of the funnest things to me. So I totally get where you're coming from. And I'm a super fan of Francis Ford Coppola myself. Yeah, man. Yeah. I love Dracula. One of my favorite parts is where uh, he becomes young Dracula. He becomes young Gary Oldman. Yeah. And Mina is walking through the town square and he's like, don't see me. <laughs> she, mm-hmm. she looks away. And then when he wants her to see her, he goes, see me. <laughs> so yeah, she that's just, a, She that's makes like eye contact another, with them. Right? So cool. It's so cool. Yeah. Dude. So many like random weird stuff that you did not have to add to the movie to <laughs> right. make it good. <laughs> right. But it works. And it, like that's what you get with an experienced you film have director. both a, you have a, both a film director as well as now I'm finding out slowly a, a well thought out team around you. Because the director can only go so far. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Oh, uh, you're making me gush about that movie, about the little subtle things like Dracula's shadow following, uh, following Keanu Reeves through right. through the hall and then stopping at him. And uh so good. All right, you, you put my you put my choice to shame, actually, but it's still my favorite. Wait, it's... let me guess. John Carpenter's Vampires. I love James that movie. Woods. First of all, with James Woods. Okay. It's yeah. super dumb, but it's not my favorite. <laughs> my yeah. favorite is kind of the same thing, where it's, it's a movie that wanted to reinvent the, the vampire film. Uh-huh. And it's a very rare movie that a lot of people really aren't on, but who knows? It's a big nerd of us out there. Mine's is Innocent Blood. Have you ever heard of this movie? No. Innocent Blood. It's a movie about a... It's, it's based in the modern time, which is like the 90s. And it's about a a vampire that lives in New York. And she only kills mob mobsters mob bosses okay i've seen the picture of this yeah yeah, and she refuses to spill innocent blood so all she ever does is feed off mob bosses but she accidentally leaves one alive and he becomes a full-blown vampire and uh, hey i'm a vampire hey i'm a vampire hey and don rickles was in this don rickles was in it dude frank land i think frank i think frank langella was in it i I may be wrong but it's a paglia yes yes uh and it's just a very subtle, cute, um, and at times, because the vampire is ferocious, but at the same time, kind of likable in a uh-huh. weird way before the whole stupid Twilight nonsense. I definitely recommend in- Innocent Blood to anyone who's like a vampire head who wants to like a different take on it. It's outside of that. I really liked, uh, even though a lot of people hate it, uh, Interview with a Vampire. I really like that one. Yeah. It's one of my favorite vampire films, unfortunately. A lot of people don't like it. They said it was like poorly acted, but I liked a lot I of heard, characters in that. Yeah, they really should have added. They really should have done more movies in Anne Rice's Vampire World, in my opinion. I don't know it's, why they didn't, right? Because Interview with a Vampire yeah. did well, didn't it? Well, they did I do think uh, Queen of the Damned as well. I was just gonna say, like, they did do Queen of the Damned, which didn't do that well. Right. The problem is no, like it's a rare, as I sadly find out, not a lot of people want to know the history of stuff. <laughs> so no, man, they don't, they don't have the time, dude. It's like right. you know, people are just so quick to want more and more and more. But I thought Anne Rice was going to get like a CW like TV series, it's like The Vampire Diaries or something like that. Yeah. Or am I wrong? I don't remember. I thought she was going to get some kind of treatment. But, now, it also do not it doesn't help that she had a brief period. I think I'm looking over this one more time. Yeah, man. Uh yeah, she had a brief like um Bob Dylan moment of like coming a a uh, quote unquote coming to Jesus moment, which probably uh, did not help her movies coming out. Yeah, man. That's uh unfortunately, but, yeah. religion kind of wrecks a lot of careers, unfortunately, uh-huh. because But she like, still made books out of it so that was good. hey man i mean yeah you, you you get an idea in your head and then you become eddie murphy <laughs> right stop being funny what get arrested for having a tra- like tra- i said you get, an idea, your- oh. you get an idea in your head <laughs> what kind of idea is that man it was the idea he had bro i'm was- beverly hills cop i get to do what i want i'm gonna get and- me a- i'm gonna get me a prostitute what yeah oh geez uh what you looking forward to this week man I'm looking forward to some more Battlestar Galactica. I'm almost done with the first season. 
Um, if I get paid on Friday, I'm going to be getting a pre-order of three days before the game comes out of uh, Sea of Thieves. Cool, man. Yeah. I which I recommend. that. Yeah. And I'm also planning on listening to uh, – I found a couple of new podcasts that I cool. think people should listen to. Yeah. And, and particularly uh, Show Me the Meaning, which is a wisecrack podcast about movies. Nice. And the la- latest episode is on Donnie Darko, Ooh, which wow. yeah, which has helped me figure out, like, yeah, there's a whole team behind the making of a movie. If you guys want, you can listen to the Donnie Darko review on mastersoftheneartiverse.com. Um, there you go. MLT and reviews. We did a review on Daddy Darko. We got in deep. We got yeah. in elbow deep. Love that movie. That's cool, man. Uh, for me, I don't remember. But does Ready Player One come out this weekend? I don't know. I don't I'm out of the grid man, <laughs> for that. I feel you, dude. But if that comes out this week, I'm looking forward to that. Looking forward to playing some more Mon Hun. Uh. Kind of want to see Tomb Raider because I want to see what kind of train wreck it is. I'm very curious on how they wreck that. And uh, in regards to video games, I might just jump into some more Fortnite. I might. I don't know. Uh, Other than that, I'm just looking forward to see what this week does and watch some more movies. I'm going to watch Hackers later on tonight for reasons you'll see later on. But uh, yeah, looking forward to that. Man, uh, any closing thoughts before we seal this one up yes look on the web this is my closing thought look on the web for amc movie theaters which will be hosting a 31 hour marvel uh universe marathon for avengers affinity war i am not down for that dog all right (laughs) i'm not i definitely i've done it once i did it for avengers and mm -mm, i would not do it again Mm mm-mm 18 hours of superhero universe and you can look back and go this is a problem by the time if infinity war starts you will be sick and tired of the entire universe why would you do yeah. that it's too much at once dude it's like eat this five pound cheesecake and then at the end we're gonna give you a slice of chocolate you're gonna want to just throw yourself into a river at that point man that's too much dude it's like that ruins it like why would they anyway I feel you on that, and I've done it before. I went through Iron Man all the way up to Avengers at the ESPN Dis- uh, Downtown Disney for Avengers, and I was after I, I had to go see Avengers again because I was like my eyes were already bugged out to watch the movie. <laughs> I was like what happened? But yeah, man, do that. Uh, for mine, I will say watch more anime, watch more quality anime this week do me a favor and watch more anime just watch it don't play anime games though just watch the animes creepy voices you can always find this podcast <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh, was i supposed to add something by the way <laughs> no man i want to let okay. i want to keep it awkward uh <laughs> you can always find this awkward podcast on itunes stitcher spreaker soundcloud youtube iHeartRadio, and recently Google Play. I want, would like to ask you to leave a comment, uh, leave a like, or even, dare I say, subscribe to the channel. This helps us immensely to get more visibility and helps grow the show. And if you want to support us in a more personal ma- way, a more personal manner, check out our Patreon, where I have things up there that I don't know how I'm going to do. But as soon as I see the first dollar, I'll figure it out. Mm-hmm. I'm, of course, your host, Mike G. And I'm your host, Winter Sturdivant. And I will always ask you to take that one step beyond.